Another episode of Periscope and Humor. I swear she must know when the record button gets pushed because she didn't say she a word. starts up. <laughs> so, um, because I thought about this a little too late for Mother's Day, I figured for Father's Day we will share with you guys our um, infertility story. I was going to say uh, in vitro story, but that's not the word I wanted to use. Uh, so. Um, due to Leon's spinal cord injury, we had a little bit of trouble getting pregnant. So, you said just a little bit? Yeah, yeah literally, just, just, just a smidge. Um, so, it took us two years. Two, two years of trying and figuring out uh, what the best way for us to get pregnant was. Mm -hmm. So, without going into a lot of detail... Um, there were just a lot of different doctors who weren't really who I guess they thought certain things were, should have worked for, yeah, yeah. for him that didn't work for him. So it was a lot of exploring, a lot of um, second opinions, a lot of well, not a lot, but the super specialists that <laughs> the one doctor sent us to, which like they were all good suggestions and everything was worth trying. But in the end, we ended up doing a full round of in vitro, and so. Um, for our in vitro journey, it kind of started off with me just being like, I'm having a lot of like cramps, like terrible cramps with my uh, menstrual cycle. And, you know, I figured I would go and see a doctor about that to see if I had, um, PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian ovary syndrome or something similar to that. And he happened to be, um, an infertility doctor who was like well known I googled him he had been featured on different news channels and you know he was one of like mainline health's top doctors and he was very sure of himself <laughs> and so our journey started with me figuring out what the issues were for me and um, what that included was fibroids so the fibroids ended up, which was really interesting, the fibroids ended up not really being a problem, but they, I did have to get a procedure done to have one of the fibroids removed. And by the grace of God, I went in the day of the procedure and they couldn't find any fibroids. And literally we were in there like, and it was funny because Leon's like, how? Like, how? And I was just like, this is one of those things that's like, literally like, this is God's doing. Because the doctors were like, we just saw this like a few weeks ago when we scheduled this and now there's nothing there. So that was one surgery we were able to avoid. Um, but once they did more, um, I guess, what do you call it? Like, discovery. Yeah, Mama. discovery. We realized we just, we needed a full in vitro cycle. And so um, that ended up, we ended up finding out right before our anniversary year. Four, two, two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was two years. Because yeah, we kind of started to explore what we thought getting pregnant would mean right when we got married. Just mm -hmm. so we would be prepared. Not realizing that it was going to take us two full years to realize that we needed to do um, in vitro. So, right before our anniversary, we found out that we needed to do a full cycle. And we were supposed to go to Florida for our anniversary. And we ended up having to uh, reschedule our entire trip like last minute because of the Zika virus. Mm -hmm. And if anybody was going to do an IVF cycle, they cannot go to Florida. <laughs> so like I last minute, we were like changing everything around. So we changed our trip around, Sorry. came back, and it was literally the day before Thanksgiving that I like finally broke down and like lost it because we had figured everything out. We knew we had to do a full IVF cycle. We were blessed enough to get into a trial um, that we kind of didn't qualify for in a sense because um, some of the one of the requirements 
uh, Leon kind of didn't fit the criteria, but the nurses, or I don't even know if she was a nurse, but like, yeah, they were the, a nurse. Yeah, the nurse nurses. that is in charge of the trials, there's like a whole department that just, just, just does trials and figure out who qualifies for what trials and what way they can help you. And so she like fought to get us into this trial because she's like, you know, what happened to him wasn't his fault. Like if it wasn't for the situation, like we wouldn't have seven kids by now. We wouldn't even be needing to do this. So that was really nice to have people that like really do fight for you and care about like what you're going through and like what your journey includes and being able to get into that trial pretty much reduced the price of our cycle in like half because the trial covered the medication in which the medications are just as expensive as the procedure. Yeah. And so um, the day before Thanksgiving, I lost it because I was just like, like, you know, you, you just get tired of waiting. You get tired of people telling you to, like, pray about it and, like, this and that. And, like, I just needed a, a minute to be human. And, of course, because we knew that this was happening. And it probably was all the stress of wait, wanting it and waiting that my period was late. I had to wait for my period to come on for us to be able to start. start. Yeah. And, of course, the month that I'm wait, we're waiting to start is the month that it decides to be late. Which... It had been, which is also part of why I was getting checked out for PCOS. Um, and so I wake up the next morning and I'm like, it's finally here. And so we got to start on Black Friday. And you guys have to excuse me for not remembering all of the details of what came with it. In the moment, I remembered everything and I like, I kept a binder. Like I needed to be in control of something. So I kept a binder of all the medications, the side effects. Yeah. Like I, I literally was like, I need to do something to feel like I'm a part of this process. So like, what can I do? But now. It's like color coded and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and now that it's over, I don't remember everything. But so to start, they give you medication and the medication causes you to, um, Noelle has grass all in her hair. The medication causes you to uh, create more aches. So that way you have more options to be able to like successfully. Um, make this happen. So, um, I forget if the first one was oral or not. But like you do all this medication. And then well I think those were the injections. Because Leon. Is that the e-health? Leon, who was in charge of administering my shots, couldn't do it. I couldn't kill. I couldn't hurt my wife. Like literally, we're like, okay, here, and you had to do it at the same time every day. Every day, day yeah. So that like kind of changes how you like do things. So we had to like pick your a time. Work schedule. Yeah, I was working at night at that point, so we had to like pick a time that like no matter if I had to work or if I didn't work, we had time to do it. But then you called through one night. I can't remember. Maybe. I honestly I can't remember. Maybe maybe we thought she was going to need to and she didn't because I, uh, I basically ended up doing it myself. Like I was like bent over like, okay, just poke me right here. And he's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. So I literally had to like turn myself around, inject myself for I don't even remember how many days. I don't either. That's why I'm like, like, I forget that. But a good tip right was now. to cough when you go to do the injection because it kind of like I guess um, it might be a mental thing, but it kind of keeps the pain away. And so we do that and that causes like a lot of bloating, but you like create all, I feel like AIDS is the right word I want to use, but for some reason I feel like it's not. But like you end up creating enough that you, yeah, I feel like it's AIDS. It's you AIDS, create yeah. enough so that they have enough to be able to use to create enough embryos. And so after, yeah. it was only probably a couple weeks, Mm -hmm. of the injections they kept doing measurements to see how many i had how many on each side how, how they looked did they look good um how many they thought they would be able to use and we were trying to keep it all a secret because we wanted to surprise our family um as much as we possibly could and that wasn't the easiest thing to do because even just the paperwork like we had to put we had to we had to put in the we had to put somebody in charge of our embryos yeah. in case both when in case both of us died. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you can't just put somebody down and they don't know that. Like they 
God forbid we both die and then somebody gets a phone call. Hey, there's all these embryos that belong to them that they put you in charge of. So then we end up kind of having to like tell my sister because she was she we left her in charge of the embryos if something was to happen to us. And then the day of the procedure to go in. So we had to go into the hospital and do a same day procedure to um and i feel like i'm missing some stuff i feel like there was like a lot of appointments in between oh there was check. a lot of checks there was a lot of blood checks there yeah, was a and lot that of blood was, draws there yeah, was a lot and of that's uh, hard too when you're trying to work like it kind of worked out because i would go after my shift in the morning mm-hmm. but like if i wasn't able to get that like first appointment in the morning it's a lot of back and forth to like keep everything in order but it, it totally uh, despite the fact that there's grass in her hair right now totally worth it so we go in, we end up having to get somebody to drive us because we both had to go under to have the procedure the procedures done. Mm-hmm. So then it's like, okay, well now somebody else needs to know because we can't even drive ourselves home. <laughs> so we end up having to tell my mom and she was our ride um, because what they did was Leon went under anesthesia first. They went in and they extracted sperm from him. Look, un- look at it underneath the microscope. See how good his sperm was to know whether or not it was worth them putting me, um, <laughs> putting me under because we had decided um, that we donor. didn't want donor sperm. Oh yeah, yeah, that part yeah. Yeah, we yeah. didn't want anything yeah. donor. Yeah. We were like, if this if this kid wasn't both of ours fully, we were just we were going to be okay with not having mm-hmm. kids best uncle um, and aunts ever. yeah we would have spend the best uncle and aunts ever and we would have traveled and we would did all of the things that people without kids do and we were totally because after like two years of trying and not knowing and having a doctor look at you and be like oh okay so we're gonna have you go see this super specialist like you just have that moment where you're like this is not gonna happen for us and like i'm okay with that and like for us i needed to be okay with that like i was okay i was yeah, I was on the fence about kids. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, still are, still am. Um, no, I was on the fence. <laughs> I was on the fence about it, but I was more concerned about what it would do to our marriage because I knew how much she wanted to be a mom. Mm. I knew she wanted the experience to carry a kid and all like that. So I was like, "This don't work." I think I'm going to be out of here. Well, it was already hard because he had decided he only wanted one. And I had always thought I would have two. And yeah. so that was a loss for me. Like, I, I literally felt like I, I mourned the loss of a kid that I had never even met. And, like, didn't even know what this person would have been. But it felt like my world kind of collapsed to, to give up what I thought would be. But then the, the more I thought about it and, you know, talking to my sister, because she is a mother of four at this point she wasn't at that time um she kind of helped give me a new perspective on it and it helped me feel better about a lot of it and then of course I like googled the benefits of like being a mom like a parent of one I looked on Pinterest and even like the little stuff that people probably think is like stupid made me feel good so like one of my favorite jokes now is to be like we're the perfect girl on the plane because it's just the but like I saw it on pictures and I was like this actually makes me feel better like this kind of makes sense because it is a lot of work you know for him and being the fact that I was going to already be gone on 35 I was like if we did have another one it would have we would have to have had them back to back um would we be able to even have afford to send them (laughs) you guys can't see the world right now it's so funny um you know how would we afford sending them to school we were still living in Philly so it was like you know, that would have meant private school. And then, yeah. you know, were we at that point, were we doing daycare? Were we, were, was the kids staying home with him? So long story short, we decided to have one. And we go in. My mom takes us early in the morning for the procedure. They put Leon under first. They get what they need. It's successful. Um, and then they put me under. And it's, you know, again, it was successful. They got 17 mm-hmm. eggs. Yep. Um, and so from those 17 eggs, we were able to make six embryos. Yes, we made six embryos and they watched them over a time frame, five days, five days, I think, to like make sure they're all viable to be like usable and then to see which ones are the better ones to know which ones to use first. And then so 
um, within a matter of time, it was time to go back in and have the embryo put in. And so, of course... You chose to just do one. You oh, could. well, because we got there and she's like, well, your success rate is 60%. So she's like, so if you want to, put, like, if you want twins, put two in. And we were like, we don't want <laughs> twins. Even give me that opportunity. But it's a hard decision to make yeah. because... You put all you your you put all your eggs in one basket. Yes, all your you, egg in one basket. And you feel like, oh, if I really do, like if one doesn't take, got to do all we got to do this all over again. And it's not even like the it's not it's not even just the financial part of it. It's the emotional mm -hmm. part of it. It's the physical part of it. Um, and so I guess it was a good thing that we had a sixty percent chance because that's actually really high. So we put one in. And it was funny because my mom was turning, we'll just say, a milestone age. And both my nieces were as well. So we were having this big party to celebrate the three of them. It was a surprise party. And the day that they put Noel in um, was the day of the party. And so I technically was supposed to be on bed rest and wasn't supposed to do anything. And we had this huge party planned. And I was like, how am I going to tell my siblings and my cousins that like I'm not like I can't help, and I'm bloated on top of that. And of course, people thought I was pregnant. And you got to say you're not, even though technically I probably technically I was. <laughs> um, and so yeah, so that was December tenth that we um, put our one little embryo in. And then we found out two weeks later, oh around there somewhere, yeah. um, we were like, I had to do something for work. And, you know, because we had people that had went through this before us and that were going through this around the same time as us, we kind of like, you know, had a support system of like what to expect, how to get through it. Because it's a long wait to find out if you're pregnant or not. And I chose not to do pregnancy test until I had like the official test. There's some people who test every day and they like watch the numbers and I just didn't want to do that. So I had I found it was like other beta ways. numbers or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, like I, I found I see beta yeah, or like that. I found other ways to distract myself. And so the day uh the day we were supposed to find out we had decided we would go to the movies. I had something to do from work and then I said, We'll go to the movies, we'll have a date, you know, we'll try to not make right, this day cut it out. We'll try not to make this day be like stressful. super stressful and depressing if we aren't pregnant. Stop it. So we decided we we're going to go to the movies and we would see a movie. And ah. the way to the movies, <coughs> Leon hates the movie spot. Ah, 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 On the way ah, to the movies, which was like way sooner than we thought we would find ah, out, ah, we were like planning on like oh we'll because it'll be later we're going to record it because we had we're planning this like big huge way to tell everybody we were pregnant. And we were like, we're, we're, we'll pull over and like record it. And of course, we end up on the road where Seven, there's like, six. there's nowhere to even pull over to record it. And I'm like, oh my God, it's dumb calling. And she calls and she says, congratulations, you are perfectly pregnant. And I was ecstatic. Leon was ecstatic in his own way. We'll just, we'll just call it that. Leon, we're having a baby. How do you feel? <laughs> I'm about to get done. <laughs> That's your first response. A lot to get done. Are you excited? Yeah. Are you happy? Excited, happy, nervous. I want to cry. Fine. We're going to have a baby. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's actually worked. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> And so, yeah. Um, I was nervous. We, we ended up perfectly pregnant with our beautiful child who we did not find out if it was a boy or a girl until the delivery room. Um, and we had a pretty good pregnancy. I think we told, we ended up telling my family, I think week eight, because I just like could not keep it a secret anymore. I felt like everybody could tell. You just told them like, the I started like, I started having crazy cravings. I swear my mom just knew and I was like, I just need to like get this over with. And we were like planning this perfectly to tell everybody we were pregnant and we told them in the text message with invisible ink. And I kind of regret it now. But in the moment, it just felt necessary. But then we still had like a big 
gathering. Everybody came over. They got to see the bump. We had a cake. We surprised the kids. The kids didn't know. Like the nieces and nephews didn't know. So we surprised them. Um, I, we had, that's why I was playing rugby. Our rugby team didn't know. So we had yes. a shirt made. And the shirt was on the top of her belly. And it looked like a, a rugby ball. I think that's how they all fell out. But they, it took them all day for some, for somebody to finally ask. Because nobody wanted to be the one that fed me if I wasn't pregnant. Um, and around week 12... We had our first scare. So it's week twelve was when we finally decided to tell the world we were pregnant. It was I called it Bumps first night out. We were going to a Valentine's Day dinner and um we let everybody know at the dinner that we were pregnant. And I woke up the next morning um to what felt like my water breaking, which I honestly don't know what my water breaking feels like because I still didn't fully experience that. Um, the pregnancy story. I mean, the, the birth story is going to be one for the age <laughs> We'll do that in another episode. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, re- I remember just like popping up in the bed. Like it was probably like 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning. And it literally felt like my water broke. Like, and I was like, I, and I was like, are you okay? And I was like, I, I don't know. And I like go to the bathroom and I'm like bleeding. And I was like, holy crap. And it was the scariest thing because you're like, we just told everybody mm-hmm. and now if this doesn't work we have to go back and tell everybody that we're not having a baby and like it's just it was a lot of like emotions and like you know so then i'm in the emergency room like in tears that like my baby is gone you can airplane airplane Zoo. um but she ended up being fine Always had a fibroid. I think that's why she don't like people on her face because she spent Well, that wasn't months. a fibroid. That was, I forget what it was called, but it was kind of like, I don't know if it was like a well-known side effect of um, in vitro, but it was something that a lot of people in the support group had experienced too. Um, but yeah, the fibroid, I don't, somehow she still ended up with a fibroid in her face the entire pregnancy. Like it literally was like, all the ultrasounds was like, oh, there's your baby and there's the fibroid. So she had like a little buddy in there. Um, and so at 38 weeks and four days, I gave birth to my beautiful baby girl. I'm happy about the birth. The birth story is the important part. So we'll share that with you guys, I guess, maybe next episode. Yeah, sure. Happy Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all of the wonderful fathers out there. And the bad ones. All right, everybody, we hope that you enjoyed our story. We hope that you remember to like, share, share and, and subscribe. subscribe. Until next time. See y'all. Bye. Happy Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth and happy Father's Day. <laughs>